Hi, No Code Ops. Uh, Phil here, uh, and I'm today joined by Sam, who's the CTO and founder of Stacker. Sam, welcome uh, to the AHA Moment demo show. Hi, Phil. I see you. Good to see you. Um, so this is really awesome. I've been a fan of Stacker for a long time now. Uh, yeah, and so just super excited to have you on the show. Um, so do you want to give us a bit of background on just Stacker, the inspiration behind it, uh, just kind of a general overview? Yeah, so uh, Stacker was founded by uh, myself and uh, my co-founder, Michael, um, uh, two or three years ago. And uh, we met uh, 10 years before that, working together uh, in an IT team in financial services. And we, um, we, we were exposed very early to the kind of world of no code via um, the Salesforce enterprise platform. So me and Michael were working together on that uh, 10 years ago. And um, I, I kind of I stayed, I stayed working in enterprise no code for around, around 10 years in different organizations. And I, I kind of realized that, that we, um, the, the kind of the aim of the no code movement, which had been kind of bumbling on in enterprise, had, we'd end up missing it. And uh, it, it, the, the problem that we, we saw was that um, these projects, even though the tools were uh, strong and the tools could be used by non-IT teams, uh, they weren't being. Like IT teams were owning digital transformations and the operators in bus the businesses were kind of being excluded because of the technology. Um, Michael, on the other hand, he, he took a path and he was a CTO of several startups in a row. And he found that the tooling to build the tools inside startups was just just lacking. Um, so even with the best engineers in the world, producing uh, tools for uh, organizations was was just really difficult. So we founded Stacker together to try and empower everyone to be able to create software. Um, and we, we kind of think anyone who can build a spreadsheet should be able to create software. And we think wow. the, the software revolution is, is to come. Um, and the fact that not everyone can create software right now is like, that's the thing that's holding people back, making the progress. Uh, that they that like by gaining the benefits of the technology we have. That is so interesting to hear that part of the inspiration for Stacker really came from a need for internal tooling as opposed mm -hmm. to like external MVP kind of stuff. Uh, that's super awesome. Yeah, cool. so it, it, it's, it's really interesting the in, internal tooling and um, external portals and MVPs and, and websites and like we we see them these things on really on a continuum. Um, yeah. Basically, you know, it's all about it, exposing data in a way that uh, your users can understand and mm -hmm. whoever that audience is there might be a different interface that makes sense for them um so we we allow people to take their data and create an interface that makes sense for their users whoever those users might be uh, well super big fan i love it um so what i'd love to do is just uh and you know feel free to share your screen um i'd love for you to walk us through uh you know like the uh, an ideal situation uh, that uh, you know a potential user would be in where they're in your product, they're doing something, and they just they get that aha moment. Um, yeah, I'd love to see that. Cool. So this is a, this is a stacker app which has been built from. Um, I can show you what it's, it's built out of. Oh, here. it's the new layout. Look yeah. That. So this this is this is being created from an Airtable um, base that could could also be created from a Google Sheet or uh, from data in a Postgres database. And you, you can see here, this, uh, th this is a, a, a team workspace um, for uh, not, not a customer of ours, but uh, you can imagine a customer of ours um, yep. collaborating on onboarding restaurants onto their service. Um, and in this workspace, you can see we've got, uh, you know, we've laid out the onboarding app, we've got an app for complaints, we've got an app for restaurants and events, et cetera. And, and those it, are essentially it, like your different objects, yeah? Uh, so these, th these are actually like one level above that. Um, hmm. These are the different applications. So in, inside oh, each wow. of these is a yeah, full application. Um, so a completely different set of, uh, of things. So right. if I jump back to the, to the onboarding, um, we can see, like, I think the first kind of aha moment that our, um, our users have is, like, this doesn't look anything like a spreadsheet. This looks hmm. like software. And you were able to create this from uh, your data inside uh, the Airtable base or, or Google Sheet. So, if I, if I jump in um, to have a look at how we're going with the onboarding, you can see uh, we've got some restaurants here in a pipeline. Again, all this data coming from a spreadsheet. If I jump in uh, to one of the records, just c compare looking at this screen 
which is telling us about how LA Breakfast Club is getting on in that process, compared to looking at a single row in a spreadsheet, right? Um, in terms of comprehensibility, in terms of uh, how the data is laid out, how clear it is what you can do with this record. And um, qu question, Sam, if someone's looking at that record, that onboarding status, can they update data on that record that will then update in the actual spreadsheet or Airtable or wherever that, that source of truth is? Exactly, yeah. So they can update any of the values that you configure that they can update. And we also allow them to, you can create buttons which will automatically update fields for you. But yes, this is a read-write. Uh, it's not importing the data once. We are treating the uh, spreadsheet as the source of truth and you can continue to update. So in this case, if I prove this as a uh, fantastic, let's do this, uh, that will be saved back to the spreadsheet and we'll dynamically update the view to reflect mm. that new status. And you can see we've now automatically transitioned that to live. And the user didn't have to know to set the status to live. The, the, the logic was encoded inside the application that this restaurant is now live. Amazing. And I'm assuming that there's also like, um, like permission sets for different fields. So different types of users can access different types of fields or objects. Exactly. So that's one of our core, our core kind of competencies is the right people to see the right data at the right time. So you can uh, limit the data that people can see down to the, the the different tabs in your spreadsheet, the different rows in your spreadsheet, uh, and the different columns in your spreadsheet. So oh wow! It, you, it, it goes down to that level. I think I can just kind of show you what that looks like. Yeah. Um, so if, if we go into say uh, this table, then um, you can configure the permissions. And here I can choose uh, if it's all records or just some records. And here you can see I can pick for each field whether I'm allowing users to update the that's the, uh, incredible. The and the common use case for this kind of functionality is allowing, if you've got a customer list or a CRM inside a spreadsheet, allowing people to access their record, like the information about themselves in a customer portal or account management portal. Ah, it's so great. like if I'm essentially someone in your CRM and I want to be able to access information about myself through a customer portal, you would just dynamically set the view that I have access to, to I could only see my information. Exactly, yeah. And only certain fields about me. So I can't read all the internal notes about how I'm a terrible customer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you can't change your, you know, you can't change your account status to be platinum. Only we yeah. can do that. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. I love it. Cool. And I, I, I think the thing that's been really powerful for us is that by making uh, applications automatically from your data sources, the applications are created exactly in your image. So. There's no software that you can buy on the market that fits your business process exactly, but your spreadsheets do. And so do your applications that you create with Stacker. So awesome. Um, beyond like a, beyond a CRM, is there any other type of, um, is there any other type of uh, like application that people are typically building off of their spreadsheets with Stacker? You know, so yeah. CRM customer portal we covered, are there any other like typical applications? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like, it's it's very uh, it's very common for uh, we're seeing people um, building all sorts of internal uh, tools uh, with their teams. So, any kind of thing that has an approval flow uh, is a great fit for uh, for Stacker. So, you, you can imagine HR approvals, legal requests, um, uh, holiday calendars, uh, internal team directories, um, uh, kind of uh, ERPs. Mm -hmm. So managing order, order management and order flows. Uh, in terms of interactions externally, we also have like not only customer portals, but um, lots of external sales portals. So if you have an external sales team and you want to kind of give them an external uh, view of the pipeline and also partner portals where uh, people are sharing information with trusted partners um, and collaborating with custom partners to kind of make, make their work happen. Love it. Well, this is awesome. Um, Sam, I guess one last question is, what is the most uh, interesting or unexpected uh, kind of uh, application that you've seen one of your customers build with Stacker? Wow. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking about which ones we can talk about. Um, so like, we, I think we, we've been amazed at how uh, broad the application is of these relatively simple concepts um, to create applications. So how many different use cases uh, our customers have been able to create uh, and uh, across such a broad uh, spectrum of customers. So uh, we have uh, use cases live at uh, Samsung, uh, 
We have uh, use cases at uh, uh, Audible, um, Mozilla, uh, like these, these these huge companies. And I, I guess I guess maybe that's the that's the that's the most surprising thing is uh, these companies that have got tons and tons of software engineers um, in them. They actually they don't have enough software engineers to make all the software that they um, could be creating, and therefore the business users, the operators uh, in these organizations, are feeling empowered um, by using Stacker. Incredible. Well, uh, Sam, this is awesome. Uh, you're preaching to the choir when uh, you know, like in my mind, the future of no code is very operational. Um, so this is a really amazing tool to support that. I think uh, the digital transformation should be back in the hands of ops folks. Um, so this is really exciting. Uh, if folks want to sign up for Stacker or learn more information, what should they do? Where should they go? Cool. Yeah. So uh, uh, our website is stackerhq.com. Uh, I think there'll be a link uh, link in this newsletter. And uh, uh, from there, you can you can sign up. It's a totally free 30 day uh, free trial. You can uh, reach out, talk to us, and we can um, help you get set up uh, with this software. Amazing. Well, Sam, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.